This is section 5.1, Areas and Distances. Our first objective is to use RAM, or RAM, to estimate areas beneath curves, either by hand or with a calculator. When you're done, I'd like you to be able to discuss the most efficient way to do RAM problems when you do not have a calculator. Do you prefer to draw a graph, create a table, or organize it all in your head? Be prepared to defend your choice. To start this off, we're going to think about our old knowledge regarding areas. In geometry, we learned numerous formulas for finding areas, but each formula corresponded to a very specific shape. When we were given irregular shapes, we found the area either by A, slicing the irregular shape into known shapes, or B, estimating. Today, we will use a new method of estimation that is very closely linked to the development of integral calculus. Toward that end, we have some vocabulary, and the first vocabulary is called RAM, which is short for Rectangular Approximation Method. And what this is, is it's a method used to approximate the area between the x-axis and a non-negative continuous function. There are multiple types of RAM depending on which function values are used to determine the heights of the approximating rectangles. And each variation of RAM involves a sum of rectangular areas. In order to understand how this RAM, or rectangular approximation method, works, we want to consider this shaded plane region here on the left. Notice that we've sliced the region into n parallel strips, all of which have the same width. We're going to call this width delta x, which uses that little Greek triangle, Greek letter delta, to represent that. Now we need to know what the width, or that delta x, is for each of these rectangles, or each of these strips, I should say. We don't have rectangles yet, but we'll get there. So in order to figure out this delta x, we're going to take the entire distance between this left edge and this right edge, which will be b minus a, and then we're going to divide that distance into n pieces. When we do that, we figure out what our delta x is. Now within each panel, we can now draw a rectangle whose area will approximate the true area trapped between the function and the x-axis. The height of the rectangle will depend on which y-coordinate or function output you choose. So we have five different choices that we're going to be dealing with today. And our first one is the RAM, or the right sum. What that does is it takes any interval, and let's say we have this one right here. We're going from this point to this point. This is the interval that we're working with. We will take the right edge, and that output will become the height of the rectangle that we use for that interval. So now I would compute the area of this rectangle, and this area would be the approximation of the true curve trapped between the function and the x-axis on this interval. Our next choice would be LRAM, or the left sum, and in this particular case, we will choose a subinterval, and we'll take the left x coordinate and plug it in, and that output will now form the height of that rectangle. So the area of this rectangle will approximate the true area between the curve and the x-axis. The third type is MRAM, or midpoint sum, which is when, in every panel, as opposed to choosing the left or the right edge, we choose the middle x-coordinate, and that generates the y-value that becomes the height of the rectangle. Our final two come from circumscribed or inscribed, and what we do in this case, in both of these, is we choose either the largest y value or the smallest y value, respectively. So if we look at this first one, our circumscribed, which is an upper sum or an overestimate, we choose the x value that generates the highest y coordinate, and then we use that largest y coordinate to compute the area of the rectangle. Notice that when we have a circumscribed or upper sum, the sum of all of these rectangular areas will be larger than the true area trapped between the curve and the x-axis. Conversely, when we do inscribed, or a lower sum, or an underestimate, we're going to use the x-coordinate that generates the lowest or the smallest y-coordinate, and we will do that in every subinterval. When we compute the areas of these rectangles and add them all up, we end up with an estimate that is always less than the true area trapped between the curve and the x-axis.
Now notice that with each variation, there is an error that's associated with that RAM estimate. You will be expected to compute these area estimates whether you're given information graphically, in a table, or analytically. Sometimes you will compute these estimates by hand, and sometimes you will be expected to use a calculator to speed up the process. In every case, you will need to pay attention to what the input values or the x coordinates are that generate the output or the y coordinates that you wish to use. So steps we'll keep in mind as we work through these problems are with all the RAM methods, we have to determine our delta x first. So remember that delta x is going to be the length of the entire interval, which is b minus a, divided by the number of subintervals that you have. And in most problems, they will tell you what a is, they'll tell you what b is, and they'll tell you how many subintervals you're going to use. Next, once you've got that width of each rectangle, you need to determine which x coordinates are going to generate the heights of your rectangles. So again, that will be given to you in the problem. They'll tell you to use a left, a right, a middle, or they'll say an overestimate or an underestimate. So to keep yourself from making errors, you should organize the input and output pairs in a comprehensible way. Some prefer to do this on a picture, others prefer a table, and still others opt to keep it all in your heads. I don't really care which way you do it, but most of you will have fewer errors if you sketch the function and draw the rectangles. Once you do that, you will compute each rectangle's area by multiplying the width, which is delta x, by the rectangle's height, which is really going to end up being the function's output. Once you've done that for every rectangle, then you will add up all of those areas, and that sum will be your estimate. So let's look at example one, where we are given a graph and a picture, and then using the data that's given to us, we want to find a left sum approximation with four equal subdivisions for the area between f and the x-axis on the interval. Now notice that on the interval, they've given us our a, and they've given us our b, and they've given us our n, which is 4. So for most of you, you will make fewer errors if you actually draw the picture. If I want four rectangles, we can see that we will cut here, and here, and here, and we want a left sum. That means for any given interval, I'm going to choose my x that is on the left to generate the height of the rectangle. Now our goal is to find that left sum approximation. So if I look here, I can see that on the left, I'm at about one and a half, and the width is two, because my delta x is going to be nine minus one divided by four gives me that eight over four, which is two. So here's the height times the width for my first rectangle. My next rectangle has a height of three and a width of two. My next rectangle looks like it has a height of three and a half and a width of two. And my final one looks like it has a height of about two and a quarter times the width, which is two. So if I multiply that all out and add them up together, I have 20.5. With example two, the data is given to us in a table as opposed to on a picture. So on this one, we want to let f be a continuous function, and the values are given to us in a table. We want to approximate the area under the curve on the interval from 4 to 16, and this time we're going to use a right-hand Riemann sum with three subintervals of equal length. So with all of them, remember, we'll need to figure out our delta x, which is our b minus our a, divided by the number of rectangles we want to have. So we get a 16 minus 4 is 12 over 3 gives me a delta x, which is 4. So that's going to be the width of each rectangle. So we know that the area will be approximately that width times the height for three different rectangles. And what's tricky about this one is we have to figure out what the height is going to be. Now remember that heights come from y values, or function outputs. So our heights are going to be coming from this row here of information. If we think graphically about this, we're told that at the point 4, we had a y-coordinate of 2, 
and at 8 we had a y coordinate of 4 and at 12 we had a y coordinate of 6 and at 16 we had a y coordinate of 8. So we have some curve that's passing through those four points and we want to use a right hand Riemann sum. So in this first subinterval we'll use the right x coordinate to generate the height of that rectangle. So notice that we will be doing the width which is 4 times the height which is 4. And if we look at our table this was our left, this was our right, and we chose the, y, the right y coordinate to go with that first subinterval. With the second subinterval, we're going to choose the right edge, which on the picture would give us the 12, and then the 12 will generate a height of 6 that will become the height of that second rectangle. Lastly, on our third rectangle, the right side x coordinate is 16, so that generates the height of the rectangle, which is 8, and that will be what's multiplied by the 4. So notice that we could have sketched the graph, but if we don't, we can keep things straight by underlining the input values that we're going to use and then circling the associated outputs. Notice since we have three subintervals, we're going to have three underlined x coordinates and three circled y values. So what this means is that since we only get one input per rectangle, we're only going to get one output. So we're going to have a leftover input and output pair that does not get used. You'll find on the AP and in my tests and on web exam problems that one of the common errors that students make is they use all of them. They use too many or they don't they don't use enough or they use the wrong one. So if you consistently have trouble with that, you might want to consider drawing a picture. If we look at example 3 now, we are given the function and the interval and the number of rectangles that we want to have and we are not given a graph or a table. So in this case, we want to compute the approximation starting from scratch. And that, again, there are two ways that you can approach it. You can either do a table or you can do a picture. I personally always prefer to do a picture, so that's how I will do this one, but you can do whichever you prefer. If you want to try and do it all in your head, more power to you as long as you don't mess up. So for me, I want to draw this picture, and I can see that the absolute value is going to have a corner at 2, and I want to go from 1 all the way out to 10, And if I plug 10 into this, I'm going to get a 16 minus 4, or excuse me, a 20 minus 4, which gives me a 16. So I'll come all the way up here to 16. And I know I need to connect to this corner. And then I know I'll go, if I plug in a 1, I'm going to get a 2 coming out. So I'm interested in the area underneath this, and I'm going to do three inscribed rectangles of equal width. So inscribed means the smallest rectangle I can make. The lowest y value becomes the height. So first I'm going to figure out my delta x. My delta x is 10 minus 1 divided by 3. That tells me my width of each rectangle is 3 units. So my first rectangle will come from this panel, my next rectangle will come from this panel, and my final one will come from here. So if I look in this first section here, the lowest y coordinate occurs at 2. So I'm going to have a rectangle whose height is 0. My first rectangle has a width of 3 and a height of 0. My next rectangle, again, has a width of 3, and I want to use the lowest y coordinate, which appears to be coming from the 4. If I plug the 4 in, I get an 8 minus a 4. Absolute value of that is 4. And if I look at my third and final rectangle, the x coordinate that creates the lowest y value is the 7. So I plug the 7 in, 14 minus 4, I get 10. So I have a width of 3 and a height of 10. If I multiply this out and add it all up, I get a 12 plus a 30 is a 42. With example 4, we're given the area 
beneath the curve f of x equals x ln of x on the interval from 1 to 13, and we're going to approximate it using midpoints of three rectangles of equal width. And if we finish reading the problem, we'll see that we will use a calculator in order to get that approximated to the nearest thousand. So first, let's compute our delta x. Delta x is going to be b minus a over n, which is our right interval endpoint minus our left interval endpoint divided by the number of rectangles. So we end up with a delta x that is 4. So graphically, we'd be looking at a function that when I plug 1 in, I'll get a 0. When I plug 13 in, I'm going to get some number that is positive. So we know we're going to start at 1 and have a subinterval of 4 units in length, and we'll continue with that 4 units until we get to 13. So we've got some curve that looks like this and we're interested in doing midpoints. So the midpoints will come from the middle value. Well, the middle value of this one is a 3, so we'll use the 3 plugged into the function to create the height. Then we'll use a 7 plugged into the function to create the height, and then we'll use an 11. So we can write, before we even pick up our calculator, that that area will be approximately the width, which is 4, times each of those heights. Notice that since that width is the same with all three rectangles, I'm just going to factor it out in front. My first height comes from plugging 3 into the function. My next height comes from plugging 7 into the function. And my last height comes from plugging 11 into the function. So on my calculator now, notice that in y1 I have put x times the ln of x. So then on the home screen, I can type this in, the 4, f of 3, f of 7, f of 11. And I can do that by doing 4 times y1 of 3 plus y1 of 7 plus y1 of 11. Close the parenthesis, hit diamond enter, so we get an approximation, and we get 173.176.